Hello there. Today I will build the skeleton watch using parts I sourced from AliExpress. The total cost of the parts is $98.57. I'll leave links in the video description for all the tools and parts you will see in case you'd like to build a similar watch. I will talk more about the parts as we go. The black rotor you see at the top left corner, I ended up not using it as the stock rotor is quite dark already. I went for the Seiko Inish 72 automatic movement. This one is similar to the Inish 35 that you might be familiar with. The only two differences are skeleton build and no date wheel. One important thing, this movement doesn't come with the gray plastic spacer, so make sure to order one separately if you're planning to install a dial. I decided to go with this black dial. I think it's going to fit the style of the watch, or at least the style I'm going for. First, I need to figure out which dial feed to keep, and it's the ones at the two o'clock and the eight o'clock. I proceed to remove the other two feet and file them down to make sure they're smooth. I'm now fitting the dial and everything looks in place. There are no gaps between the dial and the movement, so that's good. I pull the crown to the first position to stop the time. Now I'm going to fit the hands, or at least try. If you've ever built a watch before, I assume you'd agree that this step is the most difficult, annoying and frustrating in the entire process. I thought these hands would look nice. They are simple sword hour hand and pencil minute hand. The dial is already complicated, looks wise. So no need to overdo it with the hands. The hour hand goes first, and it's the easiest to fit. There it goes, I push it down and check if it is rotating. I put the dial protector because the minute and second hand are too thin, and I don't want them falling between the dial and the movement. It will be a pain to get them out. As you can see, there is sufficient space between it and the hour hand. It's time for the second hand. Let me tell you, you gotta be very gentle and patient. A steady hand and maybe a magnifier would really help you. Unfortunately, as you'll see in a moment, I broke the second hand. You can feel my frustration there. RIP second hand. If this is your first time building a watch, I recommend ordering two sets of hands. I decided that's not gonna stop me from continuing. This is a 39.5 millimeter case with sapphire crystal and display case back. I make sure to remove the case back gasket to put some grease on it that is supposed to help with the water resistance. Mm -hmm. 
Now I am removing the temporary stem and I put the crown on the stem that's going into the watch. I proceed to put the movement in the plastic movement holder that comes with the case. You just need to align the 3 o'clock marker with the gap to the side. This case comes with this black spacer, so I make sure to put it in as well. And everything goes inside the case. I push the crown in to size it to get an idea how much I need to cut. My advice is to always cut shorter than your measurement. You can always shorten the stem, but you can't make it longer. I would also advise to order a pack of these stems, you never know, and it's good to have a spare. I put the crown back in, and it looks like I'll need to cut more. So I make an additional cut and file it down to make it level. I check one more time for the fit and it's looking great. As you can see here, I screw the crown in and it goes all the way in. So that's good. still remove the crown one last time so that I can apply some glue to it. Make sure to apply just a little bit and also remove any excess. This glue allows the crown to stick to the stem. I put the crown in one last time. I give the case back some air cleaning.
and I installed the gasket to make sure the watch is sufficiently water resistant. Now I'm closing the case back and we can see here the display case back shows the beautiful movement. I give the watch a little bit of cleaning and it's already looking amazing. To be honest, it exceeded my expectations in terms of looks. Everything fits together, so that's great. Now I'm fitting the rubber strap. I chose this fitted black strap. It suits the stealthy look of the watch. And I also prefer fitted straps over normal ones because I don't like the gap between the case and the strap. It also gives it a premium look in my opinion. And look at that final result. Aside from no second hand, which I ordered to install later, I think this turned out great. I like the all black simple look on the outside and the skeleton dial in the inside. The entire watch is a beautiful nice contrast and everything goes together very well. Again, I'm leaving all the links in the video description for all the tools and parts you saw in this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're not sure what to watch next, check out this previous vintage field watch build I made. Thank you so much for watching.